So just to uh, introduce Aya Chittananda for those who are just joining. Um, Aya Chittananda uh, is one of the um, nuns and bhikkhunis at Karuna Buddhist Vihara in California with Aya Santusika. I think I met you, Aya, um, years ago when I was still a layman passing by a Bayagiri. And um, since then, um, Aya has been one of our uh, really valued connections and um, sisters in robes. Um, so we're, Ajahn Kovila and I are very, very grateful that she chose to join us and bless our community with her presence. Um, and uh, yeah, Aya, thank you so much for, for coming and joining us today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's nice to see you and, and Ajahn Kovalo. It's always nice to see you. I like your background. We have that set up sometimes too. <laughs> That's <laughs> green. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good. Did you yeah. just come out of winter retreat, Aya? Or sort of. of. Yeah, we, had, we usually take retreat in November and December. And with, with the rain down here, we had a, like, uh, I think they call it an atmospheric river or something. Um, it came through and that just means it pours for a few days and our creek got really, really high and we were kind of a little nervous <laughs> about it, <laughs> but it turned out okay. Um, we had some flooding around the new construction. So we spent part of the retreat trying to get rid of that. Um, and it's always hard for us to have retreat at our own monastery. So it was, it was a good break, but it wasn't the deep meditation we were hoping for. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was, um, the, the river's gone down a bit since then? Or yes. It yes. It went down. It goes down really quickly, actually. It's kind of, kind of a bummer because we still need the water, but okay. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> are you are you actually outside or is that just a really yes. good No, I'm outside. I'm I'm feeling a little funny and I think um I feel better outdoors. So okay. hope you don't mind. <laughs> is the lighting okay? Great. No, it it says something that we <clears throat> thought maybe was a filter of this day and age, but it's one of yeah. it's actually a, an authentic outdoor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So please, I um, begin whenever you you want, and then just speak for as long as is appropriate, and then we'll we'll start into Q and A after that. Okay, thank you. So as you mentioned, I'm gonna talk about Medita a little bit. I'm not a big um, Dhamma talk giver, so it might not be very long, but I'm happy to take questions at the end. And I don't really know. Forgive me if anything's redundant because I wasn't here earlier today. So. Um, you might have to hear some stuff about the Brahma Viharas again. That's old news. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So when I think of Mudita as a sublime abiding as a Brahma Vihara, it's it's um, more of a feeling for me than than I can describe very well. And when I contrast it with like other kinds of joy. Um, like Pamoja say, where it's more of like a joy that you get from insight or understanding something about the Dhamma. Um, Mudita has a slightly different flavor for me. It's more, it includes other beings, either other people, other living beings or myself. And that's kind of a big deal that I think a lot of people have trouble with is, is feeling the Brahma Viharas for ourselves. Um, there's a lot of original sin kind of underlying in our culture and it makes us feel like we don't deserve it or it's not humble to like rejoice in our own good karma or good things that happen to us that as we know come from causes and conditions that we put in place at some point. So it's really nice to not um, shortchange ourselves when we think of, of our accomplishments or our successes in life. and. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think I think it's easier sometimes to have it for other people. Um, any of the Brahma Viharas, really. So it's 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 good to spend some time focusing on ourselves sometimes too. And um, it's it's really part of right view, as I was saying about karma 
is real <laughs> and we have done things to make our successes happen so good um and sometimes like when when i hear you're supposed to abide in the brahma viharas or dwell in metta karuna mudita upeka it's like what does that look like in an everyday kind of context and it is a sublime abiding and you can access it through meditation but you can access it all the time throughout your day so sometimes it comes up naturally like i get happy every time i see somebody going for a jog like exercising outdoors i'm like oh they're taking care of themselves this is great <laughs> and random things like i was wiping off the furniture outside the the patio table and chair that i'm sitting on and it was just full of banana slug poop and you wouldn't think that would bring up mudita but last year the drought was so bad that we didn't have banana slugs around at all so when i saw a bunch of stuff on our furniture i was like oh they're doing well and they're thriving <laughs> so i was really happy to see and kind of consciously coming up with things like that to have mudita arise oddly enough it has it arise in your meditation naturally too you're kind of in that mind space of looking for things to be um, joyful about and generally just making your mind happy <laughs> in a wholesome way that's not based on like sensual pleasures but real joy um and it doesn't i mean the best kind of mudita i find for myself is when people come to us as monastics we get to hear about people's um, meditation practice and spiritual practice so my favorite things are when people talk about when their meditation is going well or they've had some insight and the the mudita that comes from something spiritual like that where people are really developing in their practice on the path that's my favorite kind of mudita so having a lot of spiritual friends and talking about your practice and um both the good and the bad can bring up a lot of mudita and karuna and it's really like the best flavor of mudita i find um and also, I think generosity does the same kind of things for me. When, when I have the chance to be generous with time or energy or resources, I have a lot of mudita for the receiver and also for myself that I have the opportunity to, to share and give. And mudita is a form of generosity in itself. It's kind of a funny feedback loop, like you have the opportunity to rejoice in somebody else's goodness or good karma instead of being jealous or something like classically they often talk about using mudita as a um, counteracting agent when you have jealousy arise and it's it's so much more than that and i wish i know that in the suttas they talk about it in different ways a little bit but it's not as emphasized as the other brahma viharas and i feel like I benefit so much from it. So it's a good place for me to go in my practice. Um, yeah, I mean, other ways of, of looking at things are good in different situations using a different Brahma Vihara. And of course you have to um, apply the right one at the right time, but Mudita can be like an easier one in a case where there's not a lot of feeling around something. So like if you, you know, can't think of a good example right now, sorry. <laughs> but like in a more mundane situation where you don't ha have the need for compassion to arise or you don't really feel much metta or upeka doesn't seem necessary, looking for a way to have mudita can be helpful looking for the good in the situations. And it's it's good. I, I think the Brahma Viharas in general are good for when you have um, a little bit of stuckness somewhere in your practice. If you're a little stuck, you can uh, bring up something like have a Metta week or and a Karuna week and a Mudita week and a Nupeka week. And you have a whole month of Brahma Vihara practice where you're consciously focusing on one of them and mudita is, is um, 
easy in a way. <laughs> it can be easy. Just like seeing somebody having a picnic and being happy that they're enjoying nature and each other and the food and, and stuff like that is good too. So looking for, consciously looking for different um, aspects of the Brahma Vihara to bring up. It's good. <laughs> I think, I don't think I have much else to say. So if you want to open it up to Q&A or if either of the other venerables would like to say anything, add anything on. Um, can I do our traditional acknowledgement of a Dhamma talk? <laughs> sure, super short Dhamma talk. <laughs> Andamama wada dama katayu sadu karong da dama se sadu sadu sadu